Welcome back, another episode. Is there anything that Angela Bassett's character Athena cannot do? We shall proceed with number 9-1-1's 3 episode B Nauto event comes to an end when the sergeant lands a plane on the freeway, leaving the insects completely gone. Athena and her junior co-pilot take over the plane when the flight attendants and passengers who are trained in CPR switch off, and the pilot goes into cardiac arrest. On the ground, Bobby is driving the stolen truck from the hotshot set with Buck and Brad, the actor who aspires to be him, and he is determined to get to his wife. She's been attempting to get in touch with me all day. As he checks to see if Maddie can connect with passengers, Bobby says, I need her to hear my voice, and I need to hear hers in case. When Athena finds that she can't divert the plane to land at Lax or any other nearby airport, she and Bobby finally get along. He asks what she needs from him. Is there a runway in his back pocket, please? Okay, so, yes, he does possess the 110. Sure, Bobby chooses to close the 110 in order to provide his spouse with a runway. When the jet flies directly over the 118 and other firms waiting at Lax, Buck uses a borrowed motorcycle to stop traffic in the opposite direction. It takes a few moments for anyone to actually listen to him, and then they're all called to the freeway. Athena is guided through the landing by the flight instructor. The young kid seated behind her in the cockpit ensures that the seatbelt light is turned on, and nearly everyone in the 911 globe is either on the aircraft, watching news about the aircraft, or rushing toward the 110. Bobby waits for Athena to land the jet while perched atop the truck. He says, I see you. I also notice you. I adore you, she answers. In person, tell me, he requests. Naturally, it's a difficult landing. Bobby says to Athena, welcome to Los Angeles, as the plane comes to a stop directly in front of him. They're still in danger, though. When a fire breaks out on board, they have to hurriedly evacuate the passengers, and Athena remains back to continue performing CPR on the pilot. She sends Dennis to fetch Bobby, who immediately jumps back into captain mode and boards the 118. Both the pilot and Athena are saved. However, there is still the issue of Fulton's black book, Athena left him in the trunk, but the AUSA who pulled her over isn't a legitimate lawyer. After Athena, Dennis, and the book that the prisoner knows where to find, he's not the only one. Thankfully, they can hide in Athena's husband's fire truck and lead the AUSAS who assigned her to the escort on a merry chase. Athena finally arrives at Lax at this point, everyone engaged in Fulton's sex trafficking operation is in his vehicle at the library. However, as soon as Athena, Bobby, and Dennis discover it, which contains several well-known names, one of the AUSAS appears and threatens them with a gun. This individual appears in the novel. After shooting Bobby, Dennis stabs him in a spot that is fitting for his crimes with the knife he forged on the plane. After that, Athena phones in and cuffs the AUSA. Dennis believes he owed Athena a life, and Bobby thanks him for saving his. Athena pays Dennis a visit in his hospital room as the show comes to a close. Even though it took so long for him to be brought to justice, she gives him credit for staying around and not fleeing after killing her fiancé. Though nothing can ever reverse what he did and bring Emmett back, Athena approves of him accepting the offer made to him. After that, she walks outside with Bobby in the hallway to see Dennis get back together with his family. I'm okay, she declares. But there's still more. At the 118, Jared is still in command, and nothing seems to have changed as he speaks with Eddie, Hen, and Chimney. That is, until he meets Buck, who he hugs since he saved his life. Son, do you feel these arms? I'm putting you under my wing right now. Nobody is sure how to respond. And to be really honest, we also don't. For more videos, subscribe.